All right, another five-match card with most of the championships not even getting defended. Great. Actually, you know, this was a pretty good show. Starting off with one of the absolute best WWE matches of the year, and maybe CM Punk's best match since he started wrestling again this decade. Punk and Drew McIntyre tried to stab each other. There was a wrench. There was blood, finally. For all you youngsters out there, the Hell in a Cell used to guarantee a feud-ending bloodbirth grudge match. Look no further than all-time classics like Triple H vs. Shawn Michaels and Triple H vs. Cactus Jack for good examples. McIntyre is so perfect as a surly, big bully troll, and the way he pushed Punk around and punished him here was great. McIntyre almost Guerrero'd himself with that blade job too, the blood everywhere was a great visual. Punk's always been a great seller, good mind for wrestling psychology, and he played the underdog well here, as he gradually overcame the guy who's essentially ruined his whole WWE comeback in storyline. Only real issue here was the finish. McIntyre looked like an absolute fool, going for a claymore right where the steps and bracelet beads were. That bump could have wrecked his spine. Silliest bump I've seen since the cinder blocks Hangman Page and Swerve Strickland wheeled out last month. CM Punk winning is great news for him. Feuds with Gunter and Seth Rollins are probably in his near future. For Drew McIntyre, though, it's going to take a lot to get his heat back on track. He simply lost too many matches over the past two years, and while his character work has never been better, the main event credibility WWE tried to give him at the start of the decade is now firmly in the rear view. Nia Jax versus Bailey. Bailey has the worst finishers and offense in all of WWE. She's a painfully awkward promo, and I'll never understand those who dare to carry on like she's the new Manami Toyota or whoever. Nia Jax more like Nepo Jax only getting this push because Big Dwayne took a break from peeing in water bottles and holding up film sets to call in a favor. Boring, needlessly long match for the most part, where most fans were more excited about Tiffany Stratton. That's great news for Stratton, and this whole Jax angle seems like a good setup for a babyface turn and title run. The only problem there is that Stratton is so well suited to the current funny heel persona she's got that a face turn might be an awkward fit. Pretty clunky match though overall, as is to be expected when Nia Jax is in the ring. Damian Priest went full Super Cena on the Judgment Day next. That's great news for his prospects as a babyface moving forwards, and just horrendous news for Finn Balor, who was soundly demolished here, as were his cronies, and his coup de grave finisher amounted to nothing, with Priest surviving more than one of them. At just 12 minutes, and with Priest so dominant, this has likely damaged the credibility of Balor continuing to feud with him, which is a shame, as this was a good story leading up to this match. Priest hit a razor's edge on the outside, awesome move. Weirdly, they went for the ring apron rather than the announcer's table, which no doubt would have gotten a much bigger pup. The new Judgment Day are very much a jubber faction already, and they need some muscle to pad out the team and make them more menacing if they are to continue. All right, so decent show so far. Here's where we had a slight, a slight snag. Triple H just had to suck his own dick again. Shown in the back, doing his little gorilla position work. We all know wrestling's a work, but it's fun to watch for what it is and not be reminded by showing the head of creative directing everything backstage. We get it, Triple H. You're in charge now. I recently saw Joker 2. It was absolutely awful. Don't go and watch it. Imagine if halfway through the film, it just cut to Todd Phillips in the director's chair, telling Lady Gaga what he wanted from her in that scene. Absolute nonsense. Anyways, anyways. Gunter is showing new levels of personality lately. Years of being a very straight-laced heel is giving way to a cheekier villain. His roast of Bill Goldberg was very funny, much like his trolling of Bret Hart the other week. The tease of a match between him and the old WCW legend got a big pop from the audience, and Goldberg has been calling for one last match for a while now. So make of that what you will. 
Gunter also made a genuinely great point here. He should have been defending his world title gold on this show. Him versus Sami Zayn belongs in a PLE. It makes the title and the title holder and the challenger look more important, to put it simply. Especially with that champion versus champion bout coming up in Saudi Arabia. Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan is quite simply the best women's wrestling feud I've seen in I don't even know how long, even with how predictable the SummerSlam angle between them was. Morgan is perfect as the psychotic but cowardly scumbag heel, and Rhea Ripley's babyface turn has worked like a charm so far. There's a surprising amount of depth to this somewhat silly feud, given the two's history, and Dominic Mysterio is hilarious as the ultimate jerk, and he's like getting caught in that chain made for a great visual here. The match itself was decent. Finish, though, bit of a mess, with Raquel Rodriguez swooping in to set up a DQ, but then seemingly trying to get Liv Morgan the pin, you know, despite the match already ending via DQ because of her interference. But whatever, whatever, hey. Gives Ripley something to do while they keep establishing Morgan as a top heel moving forwards, if nothing else. All right, so, the main event. Something truly ridiculous happened before this match even started. Michael Cole called the main event the biggest match of Cody Rhodes' life. What a joke! Cody Rhodes, two-time WrestleMania main eventer, current WWE champion, who wrestled one of the greatest matches of the past ten years opposite his brother back in AEW, and who's defended the big gold multiple times this year, but this... This is the biggest match of his career. Get real. Roman Reigns, to the shock of absolutely no one, was super over here. Jacob Fatu, again, to the surprise of no one, was the scene stealer, with his wild man intensity and explosiveness really shining through, as per usual. Reigns getting beat up on, and not even being the first hut tag in his first match since WrestleMania 40 was absurd, and it did make him look rather weak and disappointing early on in the match. The hot tag Reigns eventually did do showed off his babyface fire, and the exchanges between him and Fatou looked very promising for when the pair hopefully do a singles match somewhere down the road. Jimmy Uso got easily, by a hundred miles, the biggest pup of his career for helping Reigns win the match. Nice moment, but slight problem, even as a babyface. Roman Reigns can seemingly never win without some shenanigans. To put it in perspective, Babyface Big Dog Reigns cleanly beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania, one of only two men to do it. He ended Braun Strowman's undefeated streak back when Braun was a heavily pushed star. He vanquished Triple H clean to end the game's final WWE Championship run. He kicked out of five F5s opposite Brock Lesnar. He cleanly beat John Cena back when Cena still rarely jumped. Why was Big Dog Roman so overpowered, and why is Tribal Chief Roman so nerfed? Anyways... It's really just nitpicking for an otherwise solid main event. Reigns and Uso helping Cody after the match was a cool moment too, for two guys who were complete scumbags in recent years. The story of them being humbled and more noble due to the abuse they've suffered at the hands of the new bloodline this year really worked in selling them as babyfaces, and this redemption arc they're going on has a lot of potential. It is hilarious, though, that even now, CM Punk never gets to headline WWE events over their chosen top guys. Some things just never change, I guess. Finally, the show ended on a strong hook for the future, with The Ruck finally coming back and seemingly gesturing to take out both Rhodes and Reigns. Probably goes without saying that both matchups are clearly on the cards for the relatively near future. Dwayne Johnson's show business reputation has taken a Truly horrible dive this year, but the final bus is an awesome character, and feuds with Rhodes and Reigns ought to do monster numbers for WWE when they do happen. One more angle too, post-show, it won't do monster numbers, let me tell you. Kevin Owens randomly turned heel on Cody Rhodes, great. In the parking lot. Well after that time, he lost to Rhodes and remained his pal after bashing Berlin. Okay, Kevin Owens has not been presented as anything resembling a top star for years. Even as a heel, him holding the gold right now seems comically unlikely. And even if he somehow did 
get to beat Rhodes. That title run's going to last a month at best before Rhodes gets it back. Not a great sign for the American nightmare, as his title defences continue to be wheel spinning rather than trail blazing.